are you working on microservices? Have you heard of the term called Splunk? If you are working on microservices and if you haven't heard of the term called Splunk, then you are probably not monitoring your logs or monitoring your infrastructure. Let's see what is Splunk and how we can use Splunk for different day to day purposes inside microservices world or even without microservices for monitoring something. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. Splunk is a software which provides wide variety of options for us to configure. For an example, we can monitor the logs, we can search across logs, we can create an index, we can stream all our logs into a common location and we can search that particular whole log directory. So we don't have to log into the Linux machine. We can directly go to Splunk and you can search across machines or across your deployments. So a typical example would be if you are working on microservices environment and you have lots of microservices and you want to monitor the logs or you want to traverse through these logs, you can use Splunk. Once you stream all the logs to Splunk, you can use a common identifier and then you can search the logs across microservices. How uh, Splunk works is you need to provide a Splunk server and you, you will have a Splunk collector installed in your local machine or your um, uh, cloud machines. For example, I'm using the Splunk cloud here. What I have done is I have uploaded the data manually, but you can stream the data real time if you have a Splunk collector installed in your uh, VSI machines or um, any any machine which you have. If let's say you are in a cloud uh, vendor infrastructure, for example, Amazon or uh, Cloud Foundry, they do have services where you can stream your logs automatically to Splunk. So they have the Splunk infrastructure and the logs get redirected to the Splunk instance. So let's say this is how the logs get redirected and this is the UI. So this is the Splunk UI. This is how the Splunk UI looks like. Uh, what I have done is I have created an um, account under Sp uh, Splunk Cloud and I have uploaded some um, log files here so that I can show you how to search or how does it show. So this is how uh, Splunk shows up. So this is the typical Splunk dashboard which you can see which you use for searching. So the example which I have done here is I have uploaded the log files here. So I'm going to search across the log. For example, here I have a source file called tutorial data.zip and then I had different sources. So you have something called host here. This shows what host it is. Currently it is the local host because I have manually uploaded. If you are streaming it from different hosts, the hosts show up here. The next one is the source. So these are different files which are having the data. Right, that's basically the source of information. So if you don't have any files, if you are having microservices, then you will have the microservices um, names. Right, source type is something which you want to group by. So let's say you want to group uh, some specific set of logs onto uh, a different source type. You can group them and you can traverse by that as well. So if I let's say I, I select vendor sales, this will filter out the logs based on the source type called vendor sales. So only the logs which are uh, specific to the vendor um, vendor sales that will be displayed right and also you can use it for visualization so if you have any specific logs or if you have any specific stacks so for example this is not specific to logs you can publish some stats let's say you have some reports to be generated you can do that from Splunk so you can stream the data to Splunk and then you can create a visualization uh, dashboard or you can create pivot tables from the um, visualization option here right and you can also generate mail reports so if let's say you want to monitor some error logs or any error report or any fluctuation in the reports you can create alerting for that so you have an option called alerts here so we can create alerting from the Splunk instance so you can create uh, an alert based on the data which is coming in and then you can notify the um, monitor right so you can do that as well uh, also you can create custom dashboards uh, in splunk let's say you have uh, the logs coming in you have your uh, jvm data coming in let's say you want to monitor them in a single dashboard you can do that as well so for example they have created a um, few dashboards here 
Splunk team has created some dashboards. So what I'm doing is I'm using a trial version here um, of the Splunk cloud. So this is one particular dashboard and you click on it. This takes you directly to the logs or the data or the event you call, right? So it directly takes you to that, right? So let's say I want to see the uh, exact source file, right? So I have the logs here, but I want to see the exact source file. How do I do that? You can click on this option, go to event actions, and you can go to show source. You have lots of other options here. You can extract the fields, you can uh, build the event types, you can extract the fields as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to show source. Show source is going to show the exact um, data which is coming in the file. So which is coming from the file. So let's say I put 500 per page. This is going to show me 500 lines, right? So I think it takes a while. Let me put 200 or even 50. I think there is nothing much here. Let's take some other example, right? So this is prices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for tutorial data dot zip and let's search for a particular file as well right and i'll do a show source yep this if you notice here it shows 50 per page if i let's say want to reduce it if i did say 25 it will just show 25 right so this shows the exact source or the source events which came as a sequence so you can see that as well so let's say i want to filter out using the failed right this will filter out the statements which are having failed and if i let's say i don't want this specific file i can just say star and this is going to fetch the fail for all the source types or the sources right if you notice here these are matching the events or these logs in this particular case so this is how you can use Splunk. So if you uh, want to try Splunk, go ahead and uh, try it out. You can create an account in the Splunk.com. So go to Splunk.com and there is an option called Free Splunk. You can create a cloud trial. I have created the cloud trial. Uh, it is valid for 15 days. So you can just play around. You can just try it out. Um, there is also a tutorial on how to upload it which Splunk itself provides. It's just a simple step-by-step -step process where you can just upload using the settings option here. So you can just say add data and then you can just upload the zip file here and then it gets indexed, right? So how Splunk works is whenever you stream the data, it gets indexed. So once the indexes are created, you can search across these indexes. So in general here, I don't have any index because I didn't stream the data and I'm using the Splunk cloud, but in general, you will have something like index equal to Let's say tech primers, right? You will have index equal to tech primers, and then you will be searching on that particular index. So, if you have lots of teams streaming the data onto the same Splunk instance, you will have your own index, so you don't have to worry about the data quality, right? And there are lots of other options um, using uh, Splunk queries. So, you can have different options. If you see here, see there are lots of suggestions which are coming in. Uh, you can do that if you want to get. Uh, statistical information on what is the uh, maximum count of how many transactions were there for that particular search query or all those can be done um, using the Splunk query so you can uh, take a look at the Splunk tutorials uh, from the Splunk website there are lots of documentation around how to create these Splunk queries and stuff like that but in general Splunk is used for data mining whenever you have lots of uh, events or data you can do data mining over Splunk using the Splunk dashboard you can configure alerts you can create dashboards you can even create reports out of it and then you can send those reports daily so splunk provides uh, lots of options apart from data mining it has um, primarily it is used for uh, logging purpose so lots of firms are initially using it for logging because that's a more common criteria but you can stream your infrastructure details uh, onto splunk and then you can search as well because if you don't want to manage a separate database and separate ui then you can go for Splunk because Splunk does that automatically. So because Splunk already has its UI, its dashboard, and it is so customizable that you don't have to create them again. You just stream the data, you can create reports, and you can create a dashboard out of the data which you have pushed in, right? So that is Splunk. Uh, it is typically using Elasticsearch, if you have noticed, and this is the Kibana kind of UI setup where you have 
um, different fields it automatically mines your data and it creates the fields um, which you can use for querying so if let's say you want to use this particular field you just say you just double click and then it will you can double click I think selected yes so yeah you just say yes and then you can query it using this if you could just click on that particular value it automatically pushes that particular string onto the search right and it queries based on that particular field right you can even query by time so if your logs were uh, time stamped you can even query by what time it was pushed so you can see that timing here there is nothing here because the data is old right i'll just say all time but you can do that as well so you can streamline your queries and the queries are faster since it uses streams so your data will not take longer time to load while you are searching the data the, the consequent pages will be loaded so you don't have to worry about the speed of the splunk that's all i wanted to cover about splunk hope you guys understood what is splunk and where you can use it uh, in your current day-to-day -day activities uh, just give it a try if you are uh, interested uh, go to splunk.com and create a splunk uh, cloud trial it is available for free so for 15 days you can just give it a try and then see how it works and then you can see how you want to explore the options of usage of splunk in your firm or in your company that's all i wanted to cover uh, meet you again in the next video hope you guys like this video if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much